We have two amazing presenters today with decades of knowledge between them. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves when we get to their sections. Uh, but John is going to talk about different seating options um, and what's available for your vehicle. And then Heather is going to talk about what type of lifts are available to transport your scooters and wheelchairs. Uh, we've received some amazing pre-submitted questions um, when you've registered. Unfortunately, we can't get to them all. Um, there was hundreds that were submitted, but um, having the beauty of 47 locations is we can have somebody locally reach out to you and get all your questions answered. Um, and many of you may have already um, have received phone calls or emails um, to help answer those questions. If you do have questions throughout the webinar, you can submit them in the chat function. And if we have time, we will get to them. If we don't, we will definitely follow up after the fact and answer any questions you have. Um, the first, uh, when we get started, we wanted to introduce this logo and this acronym NAMITA. NAMITA stands for the National Mobility Equipment Dealers Association. And why this is important for you, we are a group of dealers and manufacturers, and our number one goal is to make and sell quality and safe products. We all abide by a set of standards, so you as a customer have peace of mind knowing that you're getting a reputable product and you're buying it from a reputable retail location. So I think John and uh, Heather might mention it, so we just wanted to kind of give a little background of what um, United Access uh, um, Namita is. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it off to John. He's gonna introduce himself and we're gonna learn a lot about seating. John, take it away. Thanks, Monique. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is John Mazidlo. I have been with United Access for a little over five years now, right here in uh, sunny, beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, it's We're almost getting to that time of year where the weather is getting to be perfect. Uh, so, uh, sorry if you're not around this area. I'm not rubbing it in. It's just amazing. Um, not only uh, have I worked here for five years, I am also a customer, as it says. Um, that is my brand new van right there. I just got it in the beginning of August. It's a Chrysler Pacifica. Um, I, uh, I, as you can see, I'm a C, what is considered a C56 quadriplegic. So I use a manual wheelchair. It's a little tough to see it in that picture, but my wheelchair matches the color of my vehicle. So um, uh, if you see me on the road, wave. So first, like uh, we're gonna talk about different seating products that uh, we have to offer um, that we sell, we install and we service. First, before we get like too deep into it, um, we as mobility specialists like to do what's called a needs analysis. And some of the, just the basic things are, we wanna find what's best for you. You may come in with an idea of, you know, this is what I think is best for me. I saw this online, I saw this on YouTube, I saw a picture of this. Um, and you call and you say, hey, John, I want to get this for my vehicle, okay? Which is great. I'm glad you've done your research, but let's do what we call a needs analysis to find what I call is the best fit for you, okay? And some of the things that we like to talk about is what is your your goal, okay? You know, I want to know what your life is like, what you're doing on a daily basis, where you're going, who you're going with. Um, how long do you plan on using this product? Um, you know, is it a short-term solution? Is it a long-term solution? Um, and we'll always like to take into consideration, you know, what is it, if this works for you now, is it gonna be the best for you in six months, a year, three years, five years and beyond? Because uh, let's be honest, I mean, we all work hard for our money and this stuff is none of it's cheap unfortunately so there's a lot of expense to this and so i don't want anybody wasting their money on a product what i call return on investment if you think you know something is the right product for you but you're only going to need it for a year you know you have to decide if, if you're going to get a long enough use out of it to justify the cost 
you know, and then most importantly, what is your function, um, you know, and, and how it applies to that particular seating device. Okay. Because some, you just may not be able to functionally use it and which is fine. And we can then just find, we'll find another solution, but we, you know, we need to make sure because the last thing we want to do is make, we want to make your life easier, not harder. And we also, you know, on, on a day-to-day -day basis, I can attest, you know, there's a lot that you have to, just for me to get to work every day, you know, for me to get ready in the morning. So I don't want my mobility solution to be difficult as well. I want it to make my life easier, not harder. So the first thing are transfer boards, okay? These are a cost effective solution that goes in uh, non converted vehicles. Okay. They're real simple and easy to use. Um, it's once again, once we discuss what I just brought up before the needs analysis, it can be a great product. Okay. The main things to keep in mind is. When you're looking at your vehicle, like, let's say a pickup truck versus a, a sedan, a car. Okay. Obviously the transfer heights are different. So we need to take into consideration. Can you transfer that high? What type of transfer can you do? Um, cause it only goes down to a certain, uh, level. This 1 happens to be called the Ascento seat or the XL seat which gets mounted right on the inside of your driver's door or passenger door. And the board can go from the height of your actual seat, like where you sit in the driver's seat, and it can go down, but it can only go down to basically the frame of your vehicle. So you get that um, lift from the, if, if you're transferring in, from the frame of your vehicle up, let's say six inches or maybe eight inches up to the level of where it's uh, even with the seat of your car. Very helpful, um, but you know, you need to be able to know that you can do that functionally. There is a weight capacity, okay? And then um, you also have to take into consideration your mobility device. So like, if you see in the, in this picture here, this woman has a manual wheelchair. Okay. So now once she gets into to the vehicle, she, what does she do with it? She, I'm sure somebody who discussed this with her before she purchased it now has to break down her, her, take the wheels off on each side, uh, 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 fold the back of the frame down and then, um, Put it, bring it over her and put it in the passenger seat or the back seat. That is just something that, you know, you have to understand you're going to have to do every time you get in and out of the vehicle, which is fine, but it's just something that you want to know ahead of time. This can, oh, if you could go back one more, um, this could be, um, you most likely, if it's not a manual wheelchair, typically gets paired with a lift of some version. Okay, and Heather will discuss that with you uh, afterwards. The next is called the Adapt Solutions Link Seed. Adapt Solutions is the vendor. Link uh, the Link Seed is the product. Okay, so the features of the Link Seed it can be put in um, the driver or passenger position or second row. Okay. Well, let's take a step back. As you can see in this picture, the seat comes completely out of the vehicle. So if you see in the top picture there with the push of a button, that's a corded pendant, this gentleman holds down the button and the chair starts to rotate out and then down as you can see where he is uh, positioned next to his manual wheelchair, okay? So there is a, we program this chair depending on what vehicle you have to try and, and you, um, we program the chair in a, in a direction, a path to travel. Okay. Um, so the weight capacity is right around 330 pounds for this. Okay. It can be installed in hundreds of vehicles and that's not a lie. I mean, because it varies from different years, 
vehicles, different models, and then different positions on different vehicles. Um, the, what's unique about this seat is that it uses the original vehicle seat that you have in your vehicle, okay, or what we call OEM, original equipment manufacturer, okay. Uh, installed, this is uh, right around $15,000. It is quite labor uh, intensive. Um, it takes about a day and a half, depending on the vehicle, to install. Once again, it's very, very important to think about the function that you have uh, because you need to be able to transfer um, as, you know, if you're going to be by yourself independently, obviously, you're, um, you're going to need um, your height and your weight, weight is a factor. Um, this has about, like I said earlier, about 330 pound weight limit. And then you have to take into consideration what is available for your vehicle. Now, I, I all, whenever I talk to somebody about this product, it's a fantastic product, okay? But please, please, please do not buy it until you consult with uh, somebody like myself in your area, okay? I always tell people, I don't want to tell you what to buy, but I would like to be consulted on what you're going to buy. Because the worst thing, the last thing that you want to do is go to a dealer um, no matter a regular car dealership and purchase a vehicle and then call me and say, Hey, John, I just bought ABC vehicle. Um, I would like to put the link seat in it. And then my eyes might get widened on the phone because it's not going to happen. And I would hate, you know, and then you have to go back to the dealer and say, take it back. And I'm not sure if they're going to take it back. So just call uh, and, you know, let's walk through it. And I can give you different options of the vehicles that it does work for and the positions that it works for. The next one is the Braunability uh, Tourney Evo and Orbit seats. So both of these are very similar, very similar to the Adapt Solutions Link seats. The, uh, it can be put in the same positions, uh, either front driver or passenger positions or second row, depending on the vehicle. It, it goes on, the Turney Evo goes on a programmable of uh, that we program um, pathway, uh, and it turns out of the vehicle and lowers down, okay? Once again, this can also be installed in hundreds of vehicles, depending on the year, make, and model. The big difference between this seat and the Adapt Solutions Link seat is that it will be an aftermarket seat. Okay, so it's a whole new seat and seat base. Um, so what we do when we talk with anybody who's interested in this is that um, we I get the information. You know, I have them um, email or text me a picture of their seat color, so we can try to match it as close as we can. Um, well, I think I already said it is a programmable and uh, pathway for it to travel, and the approximate cost is about thirteen thousand dollars. It's so it's a little less. Takes the same amount of time to install. Um, once again, just like the link seat, you want to take into consideration your function, your height and weight, and what is you know consult with us, work together to. Um, figure out what's the best vehicle that you're interested in. Okay, um, so. The, the tourney manual seat, um, it's just like it sounds like, it's, a, it's manual versus with the push of a button, okay? It, it has, it follows, it turns out of the vehicle and lowers a little bit, but it doesn't lower much at all. It basically is the height of the vehicle. It's a really easy operation, uh, simple to use, real dependable. You know, any time when you, um, like a regular vehicle, whether it's adapted or not, there's a lot of moving parts. This being manual has less moving parts, so it tends to be a, a little more dependable because when you have more moving parts, things there's a chance for it to break down, okay? This one's a little more cost effective uh, being at about $5,500 installed.
And the the one thing that you will need with this one versus the tourney Evo or the Linksy, you will need to have somebody with you in order to operate it. The last one is my favorite actually, because this is what I use on a daily basis. Okay. This is what's called the six way transfer seat. It, this goes inside wheelchair accessible vehicles. As you can see, um, the, the reason why they call it a six way transfer seat is because it moves six different ways. The chair goes forwards and backwards up and down and left and right. And it, it can do that via two options or both you can have. Um, you, there's a, what's called toggle switches. There's three toggle switches. Each of them move uh, two different ways or a corded pendant, okay? And so actually, could you go back one uh, still, Mo? One, there we go. Um, there are two different heists as well that you can use. Um, and so usually I always recommend somebody get the the short height feature because for people who are transferring, they typically always like the transfer going higher to lower versus going lower to higher. Okay. Uh, this can be done on the driver or passenger side on in the front uh, driver position or front passenger position. Okay. And the approximate cost installed is $6,000 roughly. And it takes about five to six hours, depending on the type of wheelchair accessible vehicle that it is. And like I said earlier, it does, there's a good picture on the top left there of, it's a six button corded pendant, okay? And on each button, it tells you left, right, up, down, forwards, backwards. And then on the right there, those are the three toggle switches. Now you can get it with both as well, but it's, I usually do it um, based on somebody's function. So like, for example, I'm a quadriplegic, okay? I cannot use the corded pendant like this person is using where you can just hold it with one hand and the person has the dexterity to push a button. I need to use two hands. So I, it's tough for me to use. Plus, if I drop the corded pendant that I have to try and reach for it, it's just not convenient for me. Now, if somebody like a paraplegic has full upper body function, they can easily grab it, use it with one hand. They have the dexterity to be able to push each button and they typically prefer the core dependent. I use the toggle switches and all I have to do is reach down and because I've been using it for, I've been in a wheelchair 20 years and driving for 18, um, I just can do it with my eyes closed with these toggle switches. I know where each uh, toggle switch is and what each of them do. So it works fantastic. So I want to, uh, these are great uh, pre-submitted questions. Um, the first one from Juan is why is that tourney seat so slow when it's coming in and out? The way I always explain it to people is um, we don't really want it to be a roller coaster but we also want it to be uh, safe, okay? So there's a fine line between, you know, how slow do we wanna make it where it's too slow and how fast do we wanna make it where it's not safe for people? Um, so it's, it's a fine line. There is no easy answer and everybody has a different idea of what fast and slow is too. Um, but I do understand where you're coming from, especially on certain days, depending on the weather, if it's, you know, really hot outside or if it's raining outside, you just want that thing to whip you right in there, you know, and so you don't have to worry about it and you don't care if it's a roller coaster or not. Um, so I can appreciate the question, but they do it. It It's speed is because of safety. So um, good question. Uh, Sean asks, driving from a power chair versus a transfer seat. So this is really, Sean, based on your function, okay? Some people uh, just don't have the function to um, transfer from their mobility device onto a six-way transfer seat. Um, but uh, from different driving evaluators that I've spoken with, 
uh, they would prefer that you would be able, if you're able to, to transfer onto a six way transfer seat, uh, simply because um, you have, you're in the actual seat of the vehicle. Um, you uh, have the armrest there, you have the headrest there. Um, it was what was built for the vehicle. Okay. But, you know, sometimes it's just not possible. And to be honest, I, it's, more comfortable this to sit in, which is fantastic. So um, that's how I like it. Uh, Rose asks options for a person with left side hemiplegia paralysis as a passenger and as a driver. There's a lot of options for you, Rose. Um, now, even based, even that is still a general question because. I don't know what your right side uh, can do. I don't know. Are you using a mobility device? Are you using and what kind of mobility device are you using? You know, there's so many different options, but I wouldn't, uh, I would never say that you could never drive. Uh, you could definitely be a passenger, but the purpose I just mentioned it earlier is that you should definitely go see a driving evaluator. Uh, all states have them and they can evaluate you on what equipment you would need to be um, as a passenger and as a driver. Donald asks, I would drive part-time. Is there adaptive equipment you could bypass when the wife is driving? Also, is there adaptive equipment to aid loading a person in and out of car as I have problems getting in and out? So uh, let's take the second question first. Um, yes, there are um, adaptive equipment to aid loading a person in and out of a car. I'm not sure if I'm understanding if you need something like a Hoyer lift to get onto the mobility device to load you into the vehicle, or if you just need help, you know, if you're just referring to like a link seat or a turning Evo seat or the Ascento seat. Um, but yes, there are things like a Hoyer lift that can help you get onto those. Uh, mobility that different type of mobi mobility equipment and then um, you can get in and get out and then uh, get onto your mobility device um, in regards to driving part-time this is a great question so uh, I'm married have a family twin daughters that I'm chasing around everywhere and sometimes it's just easier for my wife to drive so or like when we're going to church whatever it may be uh, we go everywhere so, um, and it's, it's a lot easier for my wife just to hop in the driver's seat and she'll turn around my six way transfer seat. And obviously I use hand controls and they're there. She just doesn't touch them. Uh, the, the pedals are still there. Uh, even if you, there's a common misconception that once you put hand controls on a vehicle, you don't have the ability to drive it with the pedals. That's not true. Whether it's mechanical hand controls or what they call electronic or feather light hand controls, um, somebody other than the person who needs the hand controls can still drive it. The last question, Philip, what are the legal implications of self-installed equipment? Um, I get this question a lot from people. Okay. Now, um, there are a lot of legal implications. Okay. The, not, and I don't mean this to be, uh, it's kind it's, I always tell people that if you were to get into an accident and, um, you installed hand controls and, and you don't have a designation on your driver's license, whatever money you have, you can probably kiss it goodbye because you, the, you are not, um, they were not um, what's called Namita certified equipment or installed by a Namita dealer like uh, United Access or other dealers across the country, okay? So there's a driving evaluation that you go through, then you get your license, you can get the designation on your license, okay? And then we can install those hand controls. You bought them from a Namita certified dealer. You had um, a certified uh, technician install them. Um, so you're you're following the right path. Um, if not, some you, you could get into a lot of trouble. Okay. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, are there other options out there? Yes, there are. Um, 
but like I've seen it before. I've seen people where there's hand controls they bought off of Amazon and they literally use it via a Velcro strap that they attach to their steering column. I, I don't know about you and what you know about Velcro, but it only takes once for the hand controls to fall off or the Velcro to wear down. And what do you do then when you're driving down the road? Uh, so it could, you know, it's for safety purposes as well. You, you want, we want you to be safe. We want everybody around you on the road to be safe. So um, just really uh, besides the, you know, you could get sued. We would just want everybody to be safe. And that's our main goal, safely be a passenger or a driver. Awesome. Thanks, John. That You're was welcome. A lot of information. All right, now we're going to hand it off to Heather on the clear opposite side of the country than uh, Arizona. Uh, so, Heather, take it away. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Great presentation, John. Um, yeah, I'm across the other side of the country in New York, although it is beautiful today here, too. It's a sunny 78. <laughs> uh, it will get colder sooner. It's actually kind of warm for September, but we'll take it. We'll absolutely take it. Um, I've been in the industry for almost 20 years now, and I guess you could say I was born into the industry. Um, my father owned his own business since 1978. So it's always been a part of my life in one shape or form or another. And it is definitely where I belong. It's something that I love to do. And I look forward to giving you great information today. And if you need anything down the road, I'm happy to help them too. So I get to do the lifts for the scooters and the wheelchairs for vehicles. And I'll go over all different topics on these as well. An unoccupied lift is basically the lift that's going to lift into your vehicle without you sitting in it. Although I know at one point or time someone has tried to stay in the chair and fit in the trunk and that just does not work and it's very dangerous. Um, but just like John was saying, we do need assessment or analysis with our customers to make sure that whatever equipment we're going to provide for them works with what they can handle and what they need, what they can do, what their abilities are. That's really important. And so that's our job to make sure that we've asked all the questions and provide you with the equipment that's going to work best for you. Basically, the lifts are designed depending on who they're for, whether it's an independent driver or someone who's just a caregiver and you're being a passenger only. That assessment comes into play with this as well, along with you know a diagnosis and a prognosis for the person that is in the chair. We want to really suit your need right now and also down the road from now. A lot of times um, you may only need it for a short-term solution or you want something that's gonna last you a long time, but we can help you with that as well. Here are just a couple of our manufacturers and options that are DEMETA certified. They are certified manufacturers and we would be the certified installers of these products. So some of the ones we're gonna show you today are Mobility Innovations, Bruno and Harmar. There are others as well and we would let you know about those items if something wasn't quite, you know, square peg round hole type of thing. We really try to fit you with something that's gonna work with what you already have so that we don't tell you, well, nothing is gonna work, you have to go buy a new car. And we don't ever wanna say that. So we will really do our best to find something that's gonna work with both your scooter or your wheelchair and your vehicle. Some of the interior mounted lifts or the platform lifts, especially in my neck of the woods in the Northeast, um, staying out of the snow and the freezing cold, we want to keep our power chairs and scooters inside of the vehicle. The platform style lift, or what some refer to as a hybrid lift, are the easiest to use. Your dexterity doesn't have to be so complicated. You basically drive the chair or the scooter onto the platform. You have one pendant and you're pushing either up or down. 
this is another picture. It shows what you do. You're going to drive your device onto the platform. Um, you can get tie downs to come with it, but you also don't have to have them because there's a barrier that would prevent that scooter or chair. If you had to stop quick or were in some type of accident, it's going to keep it in the back end of the vehicle. And these fit in most minivans and some larger SUVs also. But that's going to be your simplest device to use. Um, like here, it says on here too, it's going to keep it out of the elements. When you're traveling, because if you know your chair costs eighty thousand dollars, you definitely don't want it getting snow or rained on. Um, very easy drive on, drive off. You can still use your backup camera or any other rear safety devices that your vehicle might have standard. Um, that third row is usually just stowed below the floor. It's not removed, so you still retain those even if you have like a leased vehicle. Most many vans, larger SUVs. You don't have to bend over at all. Again, it's the simplest and easiest to use of all the devices. And approximate cost, depending on where you are, is right around 5,000 installed. Another type of interior mount lift is going to be a hoist or what they call it, like a boom arm style of lift. This definitely would require a little bit more dexterity. But sometimes people like these because they take up a little less interior room and depending on how many passengers you have in your vehicle. Um, but you would be, have to be able to bend over, um, hopefully have no dizziness issues because this would not be a good solution for you. We don't want you to fall or injure yourself. That's why that assessment is key. And basically connect you know, a male receiver to a female receiver, make sure everything is good and secure so that you can lift it up and put it into your vehicle. They do have a lot of benefits as far as going in inside of the vehicle. There are also ones that are weatherproofed, like for pickup trucks and stuff like that, so that an independent driver would be able to use one of these types of lifts and basically bring it down to where he can hook up the mount from where he's sitting in the dryer position and then bring the, the chair up and into the bed of the truck. Very user friendly. A lot of times, depending on the manufacturer, it's anywhere from you know 300 to 450 pound capacity. Um, some will allow you to keep certain seating. Approximate cost is about 5,000 installed as well. Really depends on your area, what you're lifting to. A lot of times they make uh, HD versions for heavier scooters and chairs too. They also make exterior scooter and wheelchair platform lifts, which are a lot more cost effective for people. So depending on you know, how often you use it and if it works for your budget, we also, besides just regular cost, um, you can get financing on any of these things also. So that's an option too if you just don't have that money out of your pocket. These are the ones that sh go into your hitch. So your vehicle would have to have a hitch or be able to handle a hitch. The other thing we take into consideration is load capacity. And a lot of people, we like to educate them on what it may or may not do to you know, shocks or struts or any, anything related to, um, you know, how it could, you know, physically hurt your vehicle at all or if it does at all. We like to go over all those details with you too. Um, these lifts also have a swing away option so that you can still access your rear hatch or your back trunk space uh, and still put your groceries back there or wherever you might need to put back there. Um, these you do want to you would lock down a power chair. A lot of the scooter ones come with a automatic hold down arm. So it's basically squeezing the scooter to the platform on the, the lift itself uh, and keeps it you know, very secure. Easy to operate, pretty inexpensive, transferable as long as the vehicle has a hitch from vehicle to vehicle, but it is exposed to any weather if you don't have the ability to put on a cover. So it's Definitely something that you want to make sure it can also be properly locked down. We have had customers that didn't, no matter how many times we may have showed them or someone else hooked up for them, and they've lost their scooter or chair off the back of the, via, the lift. We definitely don't want anything like that to happen to you. Safety is really important. 
this particular lift is made for sedan. We have a lot of customers that, hey, I have to keep this vehicle forever, and what do you got that will work? This is one thing that works really, really well. It's pulling the chair or the scooter instead of all the weight carrying. Big difference between carrying weight and pulling weight. So this will work on most sedans. Um, it's very secure and safe, very flexible with vehicles, and cost, and depending on what state you're in, uh, is around 8,500 installed. Some states will require you to register as a trailer, so it really just depends on where you're located at. Uh, but this is the Bruno Chariot. It's a really good, neat little thing. Um, unlike a trailer, you don't have to steer it. It will autumn the wheels actually oscillate so that they turn around just like your shopping cart would. Um, so it just becomes an extension of the vehicle rather than um, you know something you're pulling and you have to worry about backing it in and knifing it or whatever the case is. Jackknife, that was the term. <laughs> we also have mid-row lifts. So certain vehicles and certain applications, again, depending on the, the person's diagnosis, what it is that they're looking for, what solution works best for them, is a manual chair and a mid-row lift. So this product is Adept Solutions. The seat that John had talked about, which is basically like a transfer board, and then a lift that would lift up the chair and into the vehicle. So this person is able to do everything themselves. Um, but again, it doesn't allow for a lot of passengers depending on the configuration. So there are some limitations and we would help you uh, decide if that would be the best solution for what you have and in your environment. Approximate cost for both of these put on together is about $8,500 installed. Um, it's a good solution, but it doesn't work for, for everyone. And transferability is usually another question that comes into play. So that's something that we would discuss with you too. Make sure that this is gonna fit your need now and you know, five, 10 years from now. What is the best lift for me? It's definitely a combination of many things. And I love the customers that call and say, hey, I'm gonna be buying this car. My lease is up and I have to get into something else. What should I get? This is what I need to carry. Those are a dream when that happens, but we're not always that lucky, <laughs> nor are they. But we really need to piece together everything. So a lot of times when someone calls and says, hey, this is my vehicle and I have a golden scooter. And I say, okay, I need the actual, you know, make and, you know, the exact model number, whatever you can give me, because you look up, you know, golden or a pride product. There are probably thousands of different models. And then those models are, you know, made to fit that particular person. So it's really important that we put all the pieces together as well as possible. So we get you something that's actually going to work for you individually. Then we have our occupied lifts. Some of these are not so common. Um, I'm sure they're more common in the warmer climates, but I don't think we've ever put on <laughs> here in the Northeast anyways, um, one on the outside of an RV. However, we have done some inside ones and that's, you know, that's something that we do. We can also lift the person like a Hoyer, Milford person lift. You have an occupied exterior mount lift and then you have your occupied full size, which a lot of you are probably familiar with um, when, you know, medical transportation companies or even personal use types of setups. The platform style lifts are good for almost every full size vehicle. So you have your Mercedes Sprinter, your Ram Promaster, and your Ford Transit. There's some other ones too, depending. Um, these can be positioned in the side or the rear, have a much larger weight capacity. Approximate cost is around 11, but we would work that with the customer because we also have to add special flooring, uh, 
you know, for the floor itself, lockdowns to lock down the chair, and then want to make sure that we're doing it so that you're accommodating as many passengers as you need in your vehicle. The RV lift. Sorry, I had a sneeze. Uh, the, uh, the RV lift can be installed on the exterior or the interior of an RV. There's different manufacturers of these also. Um, we would discuss and take a lot of measurements and dimensions, and it's definitely where all the pieces of the puzzle have to fit together for this to work um, because you're working in a very narrow amount of space and something that's not uh, you know, OEM that you can say, okay, we're gonna mount it to this piece. So there's a lot of different things that have to come into play to make sure that we put this in safely, uh, it can hold the weight, it's gonna last as long as possible. So those are all key factors. Usually these cost around $7,500 installed. The Milford lift, now we've done these actually inside full-size vans too. Um, you can do them in sedans, you can do them in regular vehicles, but rather than taking your Hoyer out of your house and bringing it everywhere with you, this basically takes the place of that. Uh, if the person, you know, this is the only option that works for them. There's different sling types depending on dimensions of the person that it's lifting. It's definitely safe and comfortable transfers Approximate cost on these are around $8,500 installed. Oh, financing options, I mentioned that earlier. We do offer financing. Uh, we are also happy to work with your dealership possibly or your own bank. Um, we'll do whatever you need that makes life easier for you basically. Some other assistance programs we work with are state-run programs, Medicaid waiver programs, workers' comp, vocational rehab, and a lot of the VA also. So these are my pre-submitted questions. Um, so we'll go over these here. So James asks, is a wheelchair lift versus a van with the ramp the only way a disabled person can load a wheelchair into the vehicle? Um, and of course the answer is no. There's lots of different ways that you can get somebody in and out of a vehicle and that's where your specialist is really gonna come into play to see what can the caregiver handle or the person themselves, what are their abilities, what are the advantages and disadvantages. But there's usually always a solution and we think outside the box too sometimes. Um, which you have to do, all depending on the situation. Uh, it, everyone is a little bit different. So it really is basically like customizing something that specifically works for you, your family, your vehicle, your needs, your chair, your scooter. Gary asks, can a person like a quadriplegic with a permeable F5 drive from a wheelchair in a full-size van like the Dodge Ford Mercedes, using adaptive electronic mobility controls. So there really is only one manufacturer, and this would be more for someone who is a para, um, not a quad and not electronic controls that can let you drive from your chair itself and not transfer. Um, Paravan, who we are also a dealer for, but not every one of our locations, is the only one that makes modifications to the floor of the full-size vehicle in the front, because the floor is not flat, and would allow somebody to drive, but with mechanical controls, not electronic controls. Most electronic controls are high-tech devices, so a quad may use an electronic gas and brake, which is a, a throttle that's used forward and back, um, a, a servo type of steering, whereas essentially like if you were a DJ and you went to scratch a record, that's exactly kind of how they would steer the vehicle with very little motion. So there's so much that has been done lately with technology. Um, and I have some very 
great high functioning quadriplegics and when you look in their vehicle you would think they were driving an airplane. It's so sophisticated sometimes and our techs have to get hours and hours of specialty training um, at the facilities and be certified to do these types of modifications. But hopefully if we have a quad um, that's looking to upfit a vehicle, hopefully they talk to us beforehand and we can tell them knowing what their needs are, um, what vehicle they should get, and what would work best with the equipment that they need to. So sometimes we work a little backwards. It really just depends on the person. Melissa asks us, what do we see being the most helpful for caregivers when it comes to transportation? That's kind of an open-ended question, but a great question. It really depends on who the caregiver is. How many times do they have to get that person in and out of the vehicle? Um, how many other people have to be in the vehicle when they're transporting? So it really depends on the caregiver's physical ability along with what's gonna make life the easiest for that whole situation, both for the person in the chair and for the caregiver. Um, it, when it comes down to it, the biggest thing that we want to try and get for our customers is quality of life. If it's too much work to leave your house, if it's too hard and you have to transfer five times, then you're not gonna leave your house if it's that exhausting. So the key is to really make life as easy as possible for the person in the chair and for the caregiver so that they're out there living. That's the most important thing. Then Daniel asks, what are some options for carrying a scooter in a wheelchair in a four-door sedan? So one of the things that we saw was the Bruno chariot. So that would be a great way to carry it along um, in a sedan, because there's a lot of stuff that can't go on sedans just because of weight capacity. Um, you know, vehicles can't leave ring or tipping over. We don't ever want that to happen. Um, and also, do they have the ability to walk from the back of the car to the front of the car also? So that's a big factor too. Um, or do they have to break down their chair, put it over their lap? Can they break down their chair and put it in the door behind them? Not too many vehicles nowadays have what we call a suicide door. It's got to be a better term for that. A barn door or some type of door where they're opening up together um, and you can just put something easily behind you. But again, it really depends on the ability of the person who needs the chair or the scooter. It's so specific to the person. So many different variables. That's why if you need help uh, in your area, talking to a mobility specialist is really makes all the difference in the world. Um, you know, you're definitely not alone. We want to give you that hope and we want to give you that independence back and get you out in the community and help you enjoy your life. Oh, John and Heather, that was great content, great information. Um, and what we want to reiterate too, that this is the start of a conversation. This is a very kind of generalized um, kind of webinar, but like John and Heather touched on a lot it's really about your individual needs and goals. Um, and that's our ultimate goal is to have you uh, ride around safely in, uh, in quality products.